Welcome back, family. This is your boy, D, for all you smart and intelligent folks out there. That just simply means Ed. As you know, we're back with another one. Family, there's an interesting question, or I should say a, a, a very intricate question that is being posed. Are you ready to understand the reporting structures of a project manager? If you are, stay tuned. I got something for you. First of all, today's episode is entitled, Who Does a Project Manager Report To? Again, who does a project manager report to? Now, what I'm going to do, as you know, family, I'm going to give you my seven, uh, my seven point framework. After my seven point framework, actually, I'm going to do it now. One of the things I want to uh, suggest here is because in my, in my years of experience in, as being a project manager, what I've learned is I've reported to people that I was like, why am I reporting to this person? And, you know, this is they're not part of the, uh, you know, they're, they're not a, a leader or, you know, I'm, I'm confused. You know, I've had confusing moments. But what I understood was is that uh, aligning me with that particular resource or towers, it helped improve like I had the insight that I was able to go back to the PMO and say, hey, listen, we need to make some adjustments here. You can't apply those those standards over in this department because it's not applicable. And let me give, show you the examples and keynote family. If you are if you if you are aligned with a PMO and you're giving suggestions on the things that you're doing day to day, uh, and they're not received. I don't want you to get frustrated. I want you to get excited be because you you know you could always come back and explain it again. And as as that whole thing about with Rocky when he went after his dog and he just kept going back and back and back and finally the the person he sold his dog to ended up you know um, giving him his dog back. The point I'm trying to make is family is that when you are um, when you are on the ground level and you're experiencing some of the things, you need to ensure that you're communicating that up to the PMO. Now, if they decide not to make any changes, don't, I don't, again, like I said, I don't want you to sweat or get, or get frustrated about it. Keep doing what you do because you can do it extremely well. Anyway, let's get to my seven points. Point number one, you may be in an organizational hierarchy. What does that mean? So basically the project manager fits within the organization and organizational hierarchy and it reports to key stakeholders or executive leadership. I've had this where um, in one organization I was working in, I was I reported directly uh, to the CIO. Um, then I re ended up reporting to the uh, CFO. Um, so I've, I've had I, to to this particular point in general, I've had that and, and it was strange because there would be a whole PMO office and they were like, no, we want, we just want to work with you directly. And then anything that uh, we need to, you know, work with the PMO, we'll, we'll get them engaged. But this is a special project. We want to make sure that the information that stays here. Um, so it was, it was different, but I, I'm going to be honest with you, family. I really enjoyed that, that, that direct line into executive leadership because it allowed me to really hear conversation, conversations that I normally wouldn't hear in order to, to really help my development and grow because it taught me how when I'm actually delivering um, information, how to keep it high level, but yet, even though it's high level, keep it precise. Man, I'm giving y'all a lot of value here. I hope this works. Number two, well, I should say point number two, uh, departmental supervisor. So basically, um, it would be a supervisor that may have, you know, multiple projects and provide you uh, support along the way. Uh, normally, this is, I, I haven't experienced this uh, person. Oh, yes, I have. I'm, 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 we, we call them something different. It was more, it was more of a, a like a tower lead or something like that. So, uh, but this is, this point is really around departmental uh, supervisors. So again, family. Being able, if you report into a departmental supervisor, you this person oversees not just your project, they oversee all the other projects. That's why they have you reporting in. Point number three, this is the most obvious, but sometimes it's forgotten, is project sponsors. So reason why at any project, you want a project uh, sponsor, or as, as my good friend um, Byron would say, we want somebody that has skin in the game. And what that basically means is when you have a sponsor, they have skin in the game. They're the one that actually 
created uh, the business case for the reason why this fits or aligns with the actual organizational vision. So they're responsible for championing the project, providing you resources and serving as that primary contact for project managers. So project, uh, project sponsors is point number three. Steering communities. Communities. Um, I've actually experienced this as well, family, where I've had steering communities that I actually reported directly in. It was a group, and uh, it, was, it was, I think it was like two or three project managers, but basically the reason why they had us reporting in there, because in that steering community is, is comprised of uh, senior leadership and senior stakeholder, uh, senior stakeholders as well. So you're looking at anyone from uh, the director level all the way all the way up to uh, the CEO actually um, and I've had those uh, type of meetings as well with CEOs where it was about decision making it, because one of the things too is when you work directly with executive leadership one of the things I found out uh, they have a sense of urgency and I and, and I have a sense of urgency so a sense of urgency together is very dangerous. So I, I really accomplished and got a lot done um, in working with executive uh, leadership, basically reporting into them. Because anytime something came up, I proposed a solution, and then they said, "Oh, I like that solution," or "No, um, if I don't like, I didn't like that solution." They gave me their 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 solution, and we ran with it. So um, sometimes working, some people get nervous in, of being in front of executive leadership. I embrace it, and I want you to embrace it as well. The next one, uh, point number five, is program managers. So um, in the hierarchy, you may look at it and say project coordinators, project managers, and then pro uh, program managers. Um, and what a program manager does, he has the relationship between the actual project managers, project coordinators, and then the actual project itself. Um, now, you also have portfolio managers where they maybe they'll look, they'll have a whole portfolio, and then you have your program manager who's responsible for this piece, and they have project managers running each of these, but they're re re responsible for reporting up to leadership. So you may be, you may have to report into them because of the fact it make it makes sense because you guys are really aligned in the direction you're going on the project. And at first, especially you, you have a lot of one-on-ones with, with that, the program manager anyway, because of the fact they have to be up to speed to <laughs> report out. Um, you may do a reporting on just more of a, a, a director um, level and maybe even v, uh, VP, but a program manager should be able to come in to handle it on an executive level from a CIO to all the way up to the CEO. Clients or customers can be your, you may report it into them. You're like, well, what do you mean? Well, if you let's say if you're a consultant, have you ever done consulting? You may be responsible for reporting in directly into, they may have a consultant team where that person that brought in all the consultants, they're responsible for them and you're responsible for reporting in. And they may, and they'll have them split up. So like the project management consultant, that person would be responsible for all the project managers or if anything comes up that they work with, with that particular individual. Point number seven, what we call matrix reporting. Basically within matrix reporting is where project managers report to multiple stakeholders simultaneously, such as functional managers, as well as project sponsors. Hey family, that was the last point. I hope you enjoyed it today. I just didn't say, well, project managers report into the PMO. Project managers just report into, I gave you a variation, so I hope that helps open your mind up about how the different ways that you could report in if you are, if you are a project manager or a future, uh, person that will be looking at becoming a project manager. This has been your boy, Ed. Until next time, I'm out.